Welcome to Lemons.com in our lab video series in Cisco IS 1.2. You can find a complete list of IS video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we will be configuring Cisco IS 1.2 from scratch to support wireless onboarding using single SSID. What single SSID means is the SSID the user will connect to to register their devices to download wireless profile is the same SSID the users will end up connecting to to get full network access. There's another concept called dual SSID where two separate SSIDs are used for device registration and full access connection. And we kind of have already discussed this back in IS 1.1 BYOD video mini series in detail. And this video is actually going to almost be a repeat of part of that video series with the exception that we will be working with IS 1.2. So if you'd like to get more information on wireless onboarding with dual and single SSID, please check out our video page under IS section on our website. Now for our lab topology, we have Cisco IS running version 1.2 at the IP of .102. We have a virtual wireless line controller at the IP of .104. And we also have a Windows 2008 machine that it's our domain controller and certificate authority server at the IP of dot 40 and all of these are on VLAN 32 with the subnet 1621632 slash 24. On the VLAN 64 we have an access point connected to it will get IP from DSCP and this is the same VLAN that will be dropping the wireless user into. For the SSID we're dealing with a single SSID in this lab which is lm internal it's going to be 802.1x enable. For our test devices, we will be using iPhone and Android mobile device as well as a non-domain computer that's running Windows 7 called Win7 Non-Core. Now for our test user, we have a AD user called Employee1 that is part of the AD group called Employee and BYOD user. Okay, so just a quick recap as far as what's going to happen during the onboarding process. The user first is going to connect to our SSID lm-internal using PEEP authentication while user will be prompted to enter the username and password which they will use the AD credential to lock in. Once they're successfully authenticated, it will be prompted to register their device using their MAC address as well as the description of the device. And after that, if you're a Windows machine or a Macintosh, you'll be downloading the client provisioning supplicant. Or if you're using an iPhone or iDevices, you'll be using the native supplicant. Or if you're using an Android, it will be a Cisco Network Setup Assistant that you need to run. And as part of that process, you'll get a wireless or wired. In case you're dealing with wired, a network profile pushed out to you. And as part of the network profile, it will contain other parameters such as the SSIDs or the authentication protocol, whether there's PEEP or EPTLS, as well as the key length. And most importantly, the user will be obtaining certificate while the ICE itself will be acting as the SCEP proxy, obtaining certificate on the user behalf and then have the certificate pushed out to the user. And once the user has successfully received the network profile as well as the certificate, the user will get COA to be forced out to re-authenticate and rejoin the network using EPTLS authentication. At that point, user will be able to gain the full access to the network. Okay, so let's get started with our configuration on ICE. So here what we have is the ICE 1.2 interface that is a fresh install with the minimally configured features. And those are things like profiling, but other than that, it's pretty much not configured at this point. So almost that we're going to be starting configuring this guy from scratch. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do since this is something that's going to, might, going to take some time. So we're first going to enable a supplicant automatic download. So that way we can run the download in the background and all the supplicant or clients will be ready to go when we need them. So what we need to go is under the administration settings. And here we have a client provisioning. You can see by default enable automatic download is disabled. So we want to enable that. And then what we need is to run a manual update under the posture and then updates. Here we can check for automatic or periodic updates. By default it's two hours. We can save and then we can run update now. As you can see since I've been started there's been no updates run at this point. So we're just going to force it manual update and then it's going to leave it running in the background. Okay while we're on this page we want to switch on policy sets and that's how we want to configure our eyes moving forward is to use the policy set and now it's going to force us to lock out and lock back in. Okay, and one of the most important components on doing a onboarding for eyes is a certificate request or obtain through the SCEP. So next we're going to look at the configuration of SCEP on eyes and that's under the system certificate and at this point you should have the SCEP server configured and ready to go. And for us, we're using Windows 2008 
enterprise for our certificate server with uh, SCEP enable. And if you're not sure how to do that, we have a separate video that can you use as a reference to install a certificate server with uh, SCEP. But what I want to show you here is the certificate template that we're going to be using for our BYOD. And since we're already on this server that's also running a certificate authority, so let me bring up the CA. And then under here, we have a certificate template. Right click, you go to manage. And here we have a certificate template called LMBYOD. And this is just merely a duplicate that I did previously from a user default template. And the only change that we need to make on this is by default under the subject name, it was using built from this Active Directory information. We just need to have to change that to supply in the request. Since all the certificate attributes will be contained as part of the SEP certificate request that I is going to send to our server here. Right, and then to make sure that the certificate template itself is usable as part of the NDES server, make sure that under security, you allow read and enroll permission for your NDES user that you created as part of your SCEP server install. Okay, so you can see that we allow read and enroll permission for that user. We'll click OK. And once you have the certificate template built, make sure you publish it so it's usable by the system right here. Certificate template, you can go to new and then certificate template to issue. And then you select your LM BYOD as show up right here. So now we know that the template is usable. And then the next thing that you need to do, and please don't forget, is to modify your registry. So if you go and bring up a reg edit, since it's defined as part of the registry, which certificate template you want the server to use as part of a CEP request. So if you follow this tree, so local machine, software, Microsoft, cryptography, MS CEP, right here we have three registry. And for the most part, we can just point them to the template that we have, which is lm-byod. And then make sure that you have enforced password set to zero, as well as the using single password set to zero. Okay, so once you have all those configured, now we can switch back to ICE. And then under the administration certificate, here we have a CEP RA profile. We'll click add, give it a name, lm underscore CEP. And for the URL, this is going to be the Microsoft SCP URL, which is HTTP 172.16.32.40, which is our Certificate Authority Server IP, CERTSRV slash MSCEP slash MSCEP dot DLL. And then we can click the button right here to test the connectivity. It looks like we might have a typo right here, so SCEP. There you go, test connectivity one more time. You can see we have a successful server response coming back from the server. Okay, we'll click Submit. And that's all the configuration you need on the SCEP. The next thing we're going to do is to add a wireless LAN controller as a network device. So eyes recognize the radius request once it comes in from the controller. So there, where we're going to go is network device group. So we're going to create a device group for our wireless LAN controller. And this is going to be under a all device types. We'll click add. We're just going to call it WLC. Keep it simple and then click submit. And once we have the network device group, we can now create the network device. And we'll click add. And for the name, we're going to call it LM WLC1. IP address is we know this 172.16.32.104 for the management interface of the wireless controller. And then device type is going to be part of the BLC device group. Authentication setting for radius secret key or share secret, let's just give it Cisco. And then for the profiling purposes to allow eyes to pull the controller for additional device information, we're going to do SNMP version two and we already have the SNMP community string configured on the controller. And that's called Cisco RO for read only. Just have that set and then we'll click submit. Okay, next we're going to move on to the user database. We're going to be using our Active Directory as a user database, so we need to check our external identity sources. You can see we already have a certificate authentication profile configured already, so let's take a quick look at what's under there. We're just going to use the subject common name to identify the user as part of the certificate-based authentication, and we're going to use that later on for our TLS. Then 
let's double check that we have our Active Directory integrated and connected. You can see with the green check, which means that we have a good connection to our domain controller, which means that if we go over groups, currently we have no groups and we need to add that. So we'll go add, select groups from directory. And we'll just retrieve groups. And if your Active Directory size is not that big, then we can just use the default filter, which is asterisk, and then we'll just pull up everything. But if you have anything that's exceed that, and you can see the limit's 100, you might want to start using the filter to look for certain user groups that you need to add to ICE. But for us, since our user scope is not that big, we already found our AD group that we need to add. So we're just going to select a bunch of these. Although the one that's really matter for us in this lab is BYOD user and employee. I'm just going to add them anyway, as well as I say domain computer and domain user. Click OK, and then don't forget to save the configuration. Okay, once we have our identity source, we can look at identity source sequences, which we have already configured. And that's called cert AD local guess with the identity source defined in that order. So you can see right here, AD on top, and then we'll search the user for internal database and the internal endpoints, and then eventually the guest user. And we're gonna use this in a second here as part of our authentication policy. Okay, so I just wanna show you guys that. Okay, and as part of our onboarding or BYOD, we know users are gonna to need to have access to the My Devices portal to manage their personal devices. So we need to make sure that they can access those and that's going to be the settings under the administration, web portal management and settings. And here we have a sub menu for my devices and then for authentication source, by default it's pointing to my devices portal sequence. But we're going to change that to the same identity sequence that we just looked at since the user is going to come in and authenticate using AD account. Okay, so we'll be matching the AD right here. We'll click save. And that's pretty much all we need for all the general configuration. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is to take care of the client provisioning, which is the part where the user will be downloading the wireless or wired pro network profile as well as certificate. So to do that, we go under the policy elements and then results. Under client provisioning, resources. As you can see, since we ran the download, we have all these agent, but that's actually part of the posture assessment, although we're not going to use it here. But what we need is, let me see if I can find it, like a win SP wizard. So that's what we're going to need, supplicant provisioning for provisioning our Windows computer, as well as the right here, Mac OS X SP wizard. So that's for supplicant provisioning for the Macintosh. All right, so we can see all these just been downloaded like five minutes ago. So that was part of the manual update that we ran. What we're going to need to create next is for the network profile, and that's part of the native supplicant profile right here. So click add and choose that. For the profile, we're going to be, I don't know if it's, going to, it's considered lazy or sufficient, but we're going to create a single profile for both a wire and wireless. So we're going to call it lm underscore wired, although we're not really dealing with wired in this lab. But just to show us is something we can do. So a single profile, unless you have a reason to create them separately because they have different requirements, then you can also just do this. And then for operating system, you can do just all. And if you look inside all, this includes Android, Apple iOS, and Mac OS, and all the Windows. Okay, so those are supported OS for onboarding. Connection type, we're gonna do both wire and wireless. SSID. We want the user to end up connecting to our lm-internal. Make sure there's no typo, lm-internal. For security, it's gonna be the VPA2 enterprise. And for protocol, we said it's gonna be TLS with key size, let's leave a default of 1024. Okay, so these are pretty much the profile that will get deployed to the users or device as, as they are onboarded. Okay, next we need to define a client provisioning policy as far as who's going to be receiving the supplicant or the profile itself. So we need to define that by coming up with rules. The first one, we're going to call it lm-byod-win for Windows. So we're going to separate them based on operating system. So here with the OS, we're going to choose Windows All. If you want to allow all versions of Windows, 
to be able to receive this. And then there's additional condition that you can add just to make it more specific. For example, a AD user, maybe if you want to restrict the BYOD or onboarding to be available for a certain group of users, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to keep it wide open. And then for the results, you can see the same page is also used if you were to do a posture assessment. And if you were, then this is where you will define the different type or different version of the NAC agent on the first half of the section here. But for client provisioning for BYOD, we are only dealing with the second half of the section, which is native supplicant configuration. Trail for the config wizard, we're just going to pick the latest one for win SP wizard. And then the profile, this is the network profile we just created, call LM wire to be LAN. Right, done. And then next we're gonna insert new policy below. And next one is gonna be for our iPhone, which is iOS. So we'll call LM dash BYOD dash iOS. For the operating system, we select our Apple iOS all. Same thing, you can define conditions if you like, but for the result, as you can see, there's no option for if you compare with the one that we had up here for window, which is config wizard. Then that's because the Apple support or has a native supplicant for this. And all we need to define here is the network profile. Okay, and we have to create one more for our Android. So we're gonna call it lm-byod-android. Operating system is Android. And same thing for the results. Since you're going to be using our Cisco network setup assistance that you, where there's pre download before you initiate the onboarding process or as part of the onboarding process. So again, ICE will not be pushing out any supplicant for Android. And then we'll click done. All right, and we'll click save.